that's what matters most of all anyway. Amen. Amen. We stand tonight and get our hymnals and turn to page 184. <laughs> sing out every day, Amen. and it would be pertinent to our lives. Amen. 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 Brother Charles, how about opening the service tonight in a word of prayer? Amen. Page number 39. There's within my heart a melody, Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee, peace be still, in all of life's ebb and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. All my life was wrecked by sin and strife, discord filled my heart with pain. Jesus wept across the broken strings, stirred the slumbering chords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go, feasting on the riches of His grace, resting beneath the sheltering wing, always looking on His smiling face, that is why I shout and sing. Jesus, Jesus, sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Though sometimes he leads through waters deep, trials fall across the way. Though sometimes the path seems rough and steep, see his footprints all the way. Jesus, Jesus, sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Soon he's coming back to welcome me, far beyond the starry sky. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown, I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Man, man, I heard some of them young ones are singing out. 
Amen. I tell you what, let's do one more tonight, Brother Jim. Let's. Okay. One thirteen. Christ our Redeemer died on the cross, died for the sinner, paid all his due. All who receive him need never fear, for he will pass, will pass over you. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. Chiefest of sinners, Jesus can save. As he has promised, so will he do. O sinner, hear him, trust in his word. Then he will pass, will pass over you. I will pass over you. Judgment is coming, all will be there who have rejected, who have refused. Oh, sinner, hasten, let Jesus in. Then God will pass, will pass over you. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, love Jesus the power Jesus is true all who believe are safe from the storm oh he will pass will pass over you when I see the blood when I see the blood when I see the blood I will pass I will pass over Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated. Some of y'all singing good tonight, singing out loud. Thank you, Brother Jim. All right, don't forget this week our midweek service is going to be moved to Thursday night. And we encourage you to come out and be with us. And I won't be preaching unless something drastically changes. As far as I know right now, we're going to have a, a brother with us that you all have never heard before and uh, never been here. And uh, I'm sure he'll be a blessing to you. And uh, we're looking forward to it. So come out. We're going to have the home crowd singing. So if you got a song, you want to sing something, you know, come prepared to sing. Some of you kids that got instruments for Christmas, you know, you've had a few days. <laughs> Well, uh, you got till Thursday. That's a whole week. A whole seven days you've had this thing. Have you learned nothing yet? <laughs> Look, uh, in two weeks, I want you to play on that mandolin, Jesus Loves Me. Two weeks. Well, it, it's practice. I'm, I'm going to put you. I'm going to put you under the microscope this time. You didn't do anything with the guitar, so I'm going to. I'm going to help you along with the the mandolin. And Carly, what are you going to play in two weeks? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put them to the gun. I, I, I done told you, Uncle Doug. 
in two weeks, I wanted to hear something on that banjo. Amen. So, uh, you know, I'm putting you all to the gun. Amen. And, uh, you know, accountability, accountability, accountability. All right. So the Lord gives you an instrument. He gives you talents. I'm going to have to preach on the talents, I guess. And uh, we got to use them. So be thinking about it. And uh, <laughs> you get What's that? Where's the piano player? Oh. Well, in, in two weeks, I want to hear something from you, too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Anybody else get any instruments? Or <laughs> they're all, everybody's quiet now. They won't be. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Looking forward to it. But uh, the home crowd is going to be singing uh, this week. So come with the song in your heart and um, ready to be a part of the service. We don't know how many will be here, but uh, it don't matter who. Uh, how many people's here. Jesus said where two or three are there, he's going to be there. Amen. That's the most important thing. So you come uh, ready to just to worship uh, on Thursday night. We'll have a good time in the Lord. And uh, we weren't sure what we was going to do, but we just decided to move midweek service and we'd have a, a watch night service and uh, everything and get somebody uh, new that you hadn't heard that'll be, I'm sure, be a blessing to you. So we're looking forward to that. And then... Uh, we do have uh, some missionaries coming uh, to be with us here in January, so be much in prayer for them. Pray, always keep the missionaries in prayer, even the ones we don't support yet. Amen? Just pray for them. You don't have to remember that. Just ask God to remember the missionaries that have passed through. Amen? And come our way, that He keeps them on the road, keeps them traveling mercies and uh, whatever have you. And sometimes we wind up and we get uh, a couple close together. I try not to do that, uh, but sometimes it just happens that... Uh, some of our missionaries are in, and this is a date that they're going to be uh, here and have uh, available. And I always like to make sure that when our missionaries call, even if I already got somebody scheduled, that I get them in. And we're going to have uh, uh, Marie and her husband, uh, Ben, with us. It's going to be a privilege to be able to meet Ben and uh, see Marie. Uh, she was uh, working with the deaf in Honduras and done a great job there. God used her in a great way there. And she married um, her husband, Ben Muldoon, and uh, he had a deaf ministry as well. And that's what kind of brought them together. And uh, uh, their paths clicked, and their lives clicked, and their hearts clicked. And uh, now they, they got married. Amen. And uh, they married back in uh, June, I believe it was. And uh, we was invited down. It was gonna, they had an outside wedding. A parking lot wedding. Everybody sat in the parking lot, and they were on the back of a trailer. And, you know, through COVID, they made it work. Amen. And we're just uh, thankful that it's worked for them. And, but now God is uh, uh, redirecting uh, their work to, the, uh, Hon or to uh, Romania. So that's where they're going to be going to work with the deaf uh, in Ho Romania. So be much in prayer for them. And then uh, uh, we have another missionary, as Brother Jim said, uh, Joseph Covita, uh, missionary to the deaf in Peru. He'll be with us in the evening service on the 17th, the following week. So pray for them as they come. Pray for our business meeting coming up in January. Pray for Youth Sunday in January. And we may move at Youth Sunday if it looks like we're going to be able to have the youth revival to the following uh, week. We'll see what happens. It'll be the first week in uh, February. But we'll see what happens with that, okay? And uh, make sure whether we're going to be able to have our... Uh, um, meeting there, our youth revival uh, this year or not, but uh, be much in prayer about that as well. Uh, so remember these needs. Let's uh, run down our prayer list real quick for those that don't uh, sit in the Sunday school class and uh, haven't heard, uh, but pray for uh, these that are grieving. Pray. We do ask you to pray for those that have lost loved ones this year and are going through the first uh, of the major holiday season, the Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's and all without uh, their loved one for the first time. It's a hard time. So pray for them. Pray for Sister Sue and Sister Connie, especially here now. Then pray for the family of uh, Sister Marie Lafew, and they will be having a memorial service for her uh, later on. And as soon as we know that, we will do that. They want to have a service here at the church. We'd like to have uh, a lunch in here if uh, they can. But we will let you know uh, what's happening with that. We had, we've asked you to pray for the family of Christopher Lopez, um, a young man I've done funeral for uh, this week, and uh, he was killed 
in an accident running to the back of a tractor trailer down between uh, Perryville and uh, Charlestown exit at the other end uh, on uh, Route 40. But pray for him. They don't know exactly what happened. But uh, I, I got to hear uh, several times uh, before the service and uh, during the services, people will give testimony to his life that uh, he had made that profession of faith, that uh, he had come and told them that he had asked Jesus to save him, had asked Jesus into his heart. So we're thankful for that piece. And then uh, pray for uh, Elaine and John Rodriguez, a uh, couple that sits back where uh, Jack and Eileen uh, usually sat back in that area, and his sister died on Tuesday, got word of that. So pray for them as well. And just uh, pray for all those folks that have lost loved ones. And pray for these that are dealing with cancer. Sister Tanya, keep her in your prayers. And uh, she's, I think, on a high right now. One of those moments when she's feeling a little better than normal. But uh, that can change very swiftly with her, with uh, the cancer going through her body in different places. So pray for Sister Tanya in a very special way. June McCurl Clay, uh, keep Pastor Donnie Cogdale in your prayers. He told me he's not really doing good uh, this time. So just keep Brother Donnie in your prayers. Donna Kirkland, Pearl Horn, Virginia Ashbury, Cindy Mullins, ask us to pray for a nine-year-old boy that's got brain cancer. Uh, Jackie's sister, Donna Andrews, uh, continue praying for her. Renee Williams, Jeannie Sizemore, Amanda Burton, a young lady named Nicole, uh, Lady Erica Halt, uh, Nancy Wood, and Judy Calvert. Pray for all those that are dealing with cancer. And then uh, pray for Mr. Uh, Phelps, and uh, just pray for the condition he has with his uh, heart, very serious heart condition. Lift him up in prayer. Sister uh, Mary's uh, cousin, Mark Wilson, pray for him. And then pray for these uh, with other health needs. Uh, Brother Jack, uh, his health is just continually failing. His blood count, uh, they have trouble keeping it up and uh, giving him infusions, iron infusions, and uh, blood and uh, different things. But uh, just pray for Jack's health in general. Pray, pray for Paul. Uh, deals with a lot of back pains. And uh, uh, John was just sharing today that you know, they can just see uh, a lot of things failing with him. So just pray for Paul as well. Uh, keep Stan and Reba in your prayers. And did anybody ever get Stan a copy of this uh, CD? The Bible, yeah, the, the Bible and CD. Okay, but uh, he did ask for that, and um, he's uh, dealing with macular degeneration and uh, just his, his back uh, pain as well. And then Sister Reba with uh, COPD and the things that she's dealing with with her lungs. Keep them in prayer. Al Christians ask us to pray for blood clots that he's dealing with. Joanne Fitzgerald asks us to pray about the blood clots she's having. I ask you to keep my wife in prayer for the blood clots that she's dealing with. John Ballou asks us to pray for him and serious back uh, pain and issues that he's having. Tom Bender, uh, continue to pray for him. Uh, he keeps going into congestive heart failure, retaining fluid, and why has to wind up in the hospital. And uh, he's got diabetes real bad as well. And I'm sure a lot of that's affecting his kidneys. So just pray for Tom. Uh, keep uh, my nephew, David Gilbert Jr., in prayers. He's uh, dealt with the uh, COVID, had come out of ICU, went into step down, and haven't heard uh, recently how he's doing, but continue to pray for him. Uh, keep Debbie Stanley's uh, cousin, Janice, um, uh, they took her to the ER because of the COVID. Uh, she was just... Uh, her and her daughter both had it, but she just got real bad and had to go to the hospital. So uh, keep her in prayer. Uh, keep the Hoovers in prayer as uh, they're traveling and uh, they're at their son's church up in Michigan right now. He's uh, preaching at some churches and uh, uh, traveling and uh, wind up getting the COVID and they've had it really bad, she said. So he's, she said he has it very bad. So pray for them as they're away and dealing with the COVID. Then uh, Kathy Gilbert uh, asked us to keep her in prayer. Uh, she's really sick. She said she was supposed to get uh, COVID tested today. Uh, so pray for her. Uh, I think her, the whole family with them is sick, but pray uh, for the whole family there. Pray for their spiritual needs as well. Then pray for Pam's cousin Dawn who had a stroke. Archie Newby had a stroke. Debbie Ross has had a stroke. Kelly Stewart uh, has had a stroke. Uh, Brother T.E. McGill, Brother Steve's dad, asked us to pray that he keep his diabetes controlled. Brother Steve asked us to pray about his cognitive functions. Uh, and uh, just remember these needs in prayer. Keep Timmy McMillan in your prayer. 
uh, kidney failure, he's on dialysis and just failing health. Ashley Sampson, as uh, she deals with seizures and blood clots. Ashley Tab, she deals with, deals with uh, health issues that she's having. Our brother Jesse Craigle, as he's uh, getting over the COVID and pneumonia and everything that he was dealing with, I think he uh, was trying to make it to church today. So pray for him that God would continue to strengthen his body. He says he can still feel it. Uh, Eliza Strude, uh, pray for her. Uh, she wound up having a stroke. She was in the hospital for alcohol toxicity and uh, wound up having a stroke. So pray for her. Pray for Sarah Urenci, uh Sue's granddaughter. Uh, she's uh, having a, a lot of problems with gastric reflux uh, and stuff. Then pray for Benny Haynes, uh, Adam's uncle, in the hospital. He's still in a vent. Okay, we keep Benny in your prayers, and then uh, keep uh, Sherry McGill's grandmother in your prayers, and she's asked us to uh, pray for her, so just remember that need. And then uh, pray for Tammy Langford, keep Sister Fela in your prayer, Bob Sabinski, Randy Mullins, Mrs. Wilson, Donnie McMillan, Harvey and Sally Walls, and their friends at the Senior Center, Anna Meck, Mitchell Berlin, Nancy Tyler, Mrs. Cadle, and Beulah Bowman. Pray for all those uh, uh, just long-term uh, going on health issues, and then pray for the spiritual needs uh, of these who uh, are having uh, problems in their lives uh, that affect them in one way or the other. The Halls family with the uh, soon-coming birth of the baby, uh, Gus LaFew, Trish Deaver, Sandy Wainwright, the McGills ask us to pray for their children. Sister Joyce Gillies ask us to remember her. Uh, pray for Sister Connie's friend, Cecilia. And then, I don't know the Keith family, somebody brought their name to me, but uh, mentioned them in prayer here the other day, but uh, they had a fire, their house burned down, they lost everything, so remember them in prayer. That's a difficult thing, especially this time of year. Uh, pray for Miss Joan Patrick's daughter, Leslie. Uh, pray for April Rock and her family. Uh, Billy Harmon's asked us to remember his brother, Andy Harmon, for his health and PTSD. Uh, issues. Uh, the Simpkins ask us to keep uh, Joe in prayer, so pray for Joe. Uh, keep Lonnie McMillan in prayer. Uh, those who could come to church but don't, pray for them. Brother L asks us to remember him in prayer. Then these have asked prayer uh, for lost family and friends. Debbie Stanley, Eileen Mullins, Daniel Anderson, Joe Gonzalez, L. Van Blarkham asks us to pray especially for his daughter Lisa. Marie LaFue's family. Marie asked us to remember them. We're going to keep her on the prayer list and pray for her family. Amen. She's asked us to pray. Her brother, Kathy, told me last night, uh, her brother, Mickey, would never, he didn't ever want to hear anything about the Bible, didn't want to hear anything. And now he's asking Kathy to read it to him. And uh, she's reading to him and uh, sharing with him. And he won't go too far, but uh, it's prayers working, prayers moving in their hearts. So she's asked us to pray for her lost family and loved ones. Let's do that. Amen. And pray that we'll get to uh, see uh, her brother saved. Uh, keep uh, uh, Nancy Tyler's asked us to pray for her uh, family and loved ones. Delbert Collins, Kit Ray's asked us to pray especially for her stepson Joshua and her son Aaron, both to be saved. Joanne Gillies asked us to pray especially for her son uh, Billy Harmon. And then pray for our essential workers, medical professionals, first responders. Uh, pray for the Hoovers and their travels. Pray for our nation. And pray as this COVID-19 goes around and this new strain is supposedly coming and all. Uh, just pray that God would just move in the midst of it and just let us see his hand working. Amen. And that's, that's uh, the most important thing is God being in, letting God be in control. We don't understand how God does things sometimes. I told you the other day, you know, when... I got the call that Deb had been through that hospital, never called. Deb, Deb called me when she finally uh, was stabilized and everything else. And uh, back uh, yeah, going to ICU, she was able to make a call. They let her call. But, you know, we don't understand things sometimes. But knowing that God's always in control. And God let that happen at the right time, at the right place. Because they were going to release her to come home. And you say, why? Why? She's his God's child if she's in his care. Why that? Because had it happened in the car with me on the way home, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Had it happened after she got home, we wouldn't be having this conversation. 
we don't understand. The doctors were saying, we pray, God, she's in the hospital, have your way, be in control. And the doctors were going to send her home, and God had to show them that they couldn't. Amen? So we need to trust God. And in the midst of COVID-19, amen, I trust God. And, uh, you know, I, I believe in the science, and we trust the science. That's why we go to the doctors. That's why we take the medicine. Amen? But I trust God. Amen? And I trust God to direct those that are administering the medicine and doing all that. Amen? So just let me say that. I, I do believe uh, the doctors have ability, but they only have what ability God lets them have. Amen? So trust God in the midst of everything that's going on. Anybody come to sing tonight? All right, Rube. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. Amen. Anybody else? All right, open your Bibles tonight into Luke chapter number 2. And I can hear everybody now. How many, how many messages is he going to preach from the Christmas story? And you know what? I could preach one every Sunday morning and never exhaust all that is there to be preached. Amen? And uh, something that thought that God just laid on my heart, and we looked and we seen it and thought about it and pondered on it. We knew that it, it was so true. So tonight, Luke chapter number 2, verses 15 to 20, the Bible says, and it came to pass as the angels were going away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem. And see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying uh, which was uh, told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Father, we just ask you to bless your word tonight and help us, Father, as a, a feeble uh, vessel standing before your people tonight, God, just to share uh, a thought that would help and encourage each one, Lord, and uh, bring us to a, a place, Father, where we just uh, worship you wholly and completely and unabashed uh, and unbiasedly, Lord, in, in everything that we do. And God, give you the glory that's due your name. Help us, Lord, um, not to leave you in, in the place where uh, we found you, Father, on, on uh, this uh, Christmas Day, but Father, I uh, just to uh, carry you into the world and let your uh, light shine, let your glory uh, be uh, known and, and your power, Father, unto a lost and a dying world. Help us, God, to be instruments of change in a world that needs um, all the help that it can get. Now, Lord, let your will be done in everything. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen and amen. You know, Talking to Charles before church, and he told me I got all their Christmas junk down and put away. <laughs> hey, man, you know, we put all ours away yesterday, and some others will be putting yours away this week and everything. And, you know, I, I want to preach, you know, Christmas is over, now what? You know what I mean? We get all excited about Christmas, and then as soon as Christmas is over, we don't want to hear 
any more about uh, all these shepherds and all this. Uh, let's go on to something new. Let's go on to something else. And let, let's go somewhere else. And we touched on that some this morning. You know, we can't leave Jesus there in the manger. Amen. That's not where it stops. That's not where it ends. Amen. Uh, we, we got more uh, to, to look forward to. We got more to go forward. We, we got a new year coming and uh, things uh, aren't looking to start this year off much better than what they've ended the year. Amen. Uh, we got a vaccine, but now they say we got another strain of, of this junk of coming and uh, businesses are shut down. People are out of work and uh, things uh, are just uh, troubled and uh, struggling along. Uh, the same old bunch of politicians in Washington uh, are doing the the same old thing. Uh, you know what we need? Um, uh, we need Jesus. Amen. Um, you know what we need? Um, we need Jesus in our hearts and in our lives. You know where we need Jesus? We, we need Jesus uh, uh, right here in our midst and everything that we do. Amen. Uh, uh, now Christmas is over. Um, uh, so what? Um, uh, what next? Uh, uh, where are you going to go next? What are you going to do? Amen. You going to quit getting excited uh, uh, because um, of uh, uh, Christmas? Uh, you know, what was it Jesus that you were really celebrating or was it something else? Yeah. Amen. Christmas is over. Now what? Amen. Do, do, do you no longer ha have the expectation that, that, that you had? Look, look in verse number 15 and uh, 16 there, or 15 actually. And it came to pass as the angels were going away uh, from them into heaven, the, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing um, uh, which has come to pass um, uh, with the uh, which uh, the Lord uh, hath made known unto us. Um, they had an expectation um, when they came to Bethlehem. Amen. Uh, they had an expectation um, of seeing Jesus. They were told um, uh, that Jesus was going to be there. They were told um, they would find him and how they would find him. Um, and they had an expectation um, that drove them to go there. Um, and I'll tell you what, um, uh, we need in our churches tonight, uh, what God's people uh, needs to have in our heart um, is expectation um, of coming to the house of worship, amen, um, of expectation of coming um, and not just going to another service, um, but an expectation of coming um, and Jesus meeting with us when we get here, amen. amen. We can't leave him uh, on Christmas Day. and We can't leave him uh, where he was um, uh, Christmas. Um, he's still alive and he's still uh, real. He's still just as uh, uh, pertinent um, and uh, just as needful in our lives as it was in we go through things, though, in our life, and we, we go fr from event to event. We, we need to be stirred and moved some way in, in something that uh, causes us to get excited. Christmas. Uh, Christmas is coming for, for months and, and weeks. My land, so, some people don't even take their Christmas tree down. They're so excited about it that they leave it up all year. Oh, I, yeah. I, deal with that nonsense all year long. Amen. And, and by the way, uh, whoever it is that feeds my, my, my inner Grinch, amen, I, I got your gift and I appreciate it. Somebody every year gives me something um, uh, about the Grinch. They give me something Grinch every year. I got Christmas ornaments. I've got uh, uh, coffee mugs. I, I've got uh, 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 oh my, uh, shirts. And I, it's something Grinch every year. And I appreciate it. I'm not a Grinch because I, I'm against Christmas. I, I'm a Grinch because of all the commercialization of it. Amen. I, I hate how people fight and get nasty. And you, you go to the stores at Christmas time and everybody's pushing and shoving and angry uh, over Christmas. And it's a time that was designed, a time that was made to, to be a time of worship, a time of celebration. Amen. It turned into something else. And, and if that's all the shepherds had um, an expectation of, they, they would have uh, been Grinches too. Amen. Um, uh, but I, I want you to know something. We need to have an expectation um, that we're we're coming uh, uh, to see Jesus. We're coming to meet with Jesus. We're coming to have a, a time to, to worship Jesus. Uh, and if we get the, uh, that frame of mind in our hearts and lives uh, uh, like we do for uh, Christmas Day uh, and go on past Christmas Day uh, and keep getting excited uh, about the thought uh, of worshiping Jesus and uh, coming to the church house, uh, uh, we come uh, and we get all excited about a Christmas service. Uh, well, how about we get excited about every service and come with an expectation? That the Lord's going to meet with us. The Apostle Paul said over in 1 Corinthians chapter um, 
9, in verses 9 and 10, said, For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for the oxen? Or saith he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt. This is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and he that thresheth, thresheth in hope uh, should be a partaker of his hope. What's Paul saying? Paul's talking about the preaching, and, and Paul's talking about um, how uh, God um, uh, uses the preachers, and uh, the preachers are, are taken care of and, and uh, ministered to by, by the church. And, and he said, uh, do, do we plow uh, for no reason? Do, do we plow without an anticipation? Uh, do we plow without an expectation? Uh, I preach with an expectation. Amen. Every time I preach, uh, I, I preach uh, the same way uh, when there was nobody in this sanctuary as I do uh, when there's a full house. Um, uh, some preachers, um, if they don't have a crowd to feed their ego, uh, I don't preach the same as they do without a crowd. Uh, I don't preach for the crowd. I preach for the purpose, for the expectation of God using his word in some way to uh, touch somebody's heart, amen, because it's not about me. I preach about Jesus. Um, I preach with the expectation that somebody will hear about Jesus uh, and some life will be changed some way, amen, and we should come into the house of God with the same expectation that we're going to hear the word of God and the word of God is going to change us. Man, I found a new radio program I didn't know about on WDSD on Sunday night. They have a program, Faith of Our Fathers, and it has some of the old preachers. I was listening to Vance Havner on the way down here, my land's I was listening to him. I never heard him before. And I was listening to him on the way down here. I said, man, I hope they say who that is. I really like it. It was Vance Havner. I said, wow, ain't no wonder. Hey, Amen. And he was talking about something. He said, you know, one thing that, that, that's dangerous is people that don't come to church. He said, but you know what's more dangerous than people that don't come to church? He said, it's people that do come to church and hear the word of God and it makes no change and it makes no difference in their lives. Stop and think about that for a minute. Every time we get the opportunity to hear the word of God, whether it's a Sunday school teacher, whether it's a, somebody giving a testimony, whether it's the, the pastor preaching or, or Brother L preaching or, or somebody else um, uh, preaching the word of God, every time we come to the, to the house of God, we should come with the expectation that God is going to meet with us and, and God is going to do something exceptional in our lives. Amen. Amen. They had an expectation. We should leave Christmas and the, the, the Christmas holiday season with the same um, uh, ex, um, expectation um, uh, of God doing things in our lives. With the same excitement we had about Christmas Day coming. We should have the same excitement about Christmas Day behind us. Amen? We need an expectation. We were all excited when we were hearing about the Christmas story. We were all excited when we were hearing the messages about Jesus' birth. But now what? Now what? The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. He had an expectation. He was glad. He was happy. Amen. Let us change our expectation if it's not the right expectation. Amen? If it's not the right frame of mind, the right heart. But then we see in verses 16 and 17, not only did they have an expectation, when their expectation um, had been fulfilled, um, there was an exhilaration um, in their hearts um, of seeing Jesus. Amen? Um, and they came with haste um, and found Mary and Joseph um, and the babe lying in the manger and when they had seen it, um, they may know it abroad uh, the saying which told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered uh, at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Um, I want you to know something. Um, uh, you need to uh, come in here one way uh, with an expe expecting heart, um, with an expectation in your heart and in your life, and you need to leave out of here exhilarated. You say, well, how can we do that, preacher? Because the Word of God should do it. Amen. Amen. We don't need to be entertained. 
we've got to the place, and the sad thing about the church today, it's fell into the place where we don't want to hear the Word of God and get exhilarated and get excited about what does say at the Word of God. We want to be entertained. And if we don't have entertainment, we don't want to come to church. You can say amen right there. Amen. It's the truth. Just being in the presence of Jesus ought to be exhilarating enough. Amen. Just getting to hear the, the words from the throne room of glory should be enough. We preach the Word of God. Amen. We preach the Word of God. Amen. Man, that ought to be enough to excite you right there. Amen. Amen. We ought to get exhilarated uh, about uh, being able uh, to be here, about being able to be in his presence. Uh, he said where two or three are gathered, he would be in the midst, amen. Uh, and if he's here, uh, praise God, I don't know. I can't, am I the only one that ever gets to feel him here? Am I the only one that ever gets to fellowship with him and visit with him here? Yeah. Amen. I hope not. Amen. I hope not. It ought to exhilarate us, and we ought to be excited because we met with Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you read further on in uh, the, the chapter of Luke chapter 2, uh, you find uh, uh, that uh, as uh, the days went on, uh, they went to do uh, what was necessary. They went to perform uh, what was required of them by the law. In other words, they took Jesus to Jerusalem uh, uh, to have uh, the... Uh, 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 the, the circumcision done, the, the, the rituals performed that were required. And, and the Bible says, um, and uh, there was uh, uh, an old man there by the name of Simeon uh, that was thrilled um, and exhilarated uh, when he got to see Jesus. Um, uh, look at what it says in Luke chapter uh, 22, 27, um, on down a few verses. It says, um, and he came by the Spirit into the temple. Um, and when the parents uh, uh, brought uh, in the child Jesus to do for him, uh, after the custom of the law, all, uh, then took he uh, him up in his arms um, and blessed God and said, Lord, uh, now let us thy servant depart in peace um, according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, um, uh, which thou hast prepared um, uh, before the face of all people, um, a light to lighten the Gentiles um, and the glory of thy people Israel. And uh, uh, Joseph uh, and his mother marveled um, at those things which were spoken um, of him, um, uh, Simeon um, uh, was glad. Glad. Uh, Simeon was ready to die. Uh, Simeon said, now I can go in peace uh, because I've seen Jesus. Amen. Amen. Man, when we, when we get to meet with Jesus, uh, that ought to uh, just uh, settle everything in our hearts and life. It ought to exhilarate us uh, uh, beyond measure. It ought to uh, just um, uh, thrill us um, and just uh, uh, make us um, uh, want to shout the house down. It ought to make us just want to hear uh, more about uh, what he's done and how he's done it. Uh, more of his love, more of his mercy, more of his grace, uh, more of his soon coming uh, to take us out of this uh, uh, hill hole uh, uh, that we live in today. Uh, uh, that's a uh, getting worse and worse every day. But you read on down a few more verses. The Bible says, and there was somebody else there. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with an husband um, uh, seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, which departed not from the temple, um, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. And she coming in um, at that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake unto him all, and spake on, of him uh, to all them uh, that looked for uh, the redemption of, in Jerusalem um, and praise God. Uh, uh, Simeon uh, seen him uh, he got exhilarated Anna uh, seen him uh, uh, she got exhilarated uh, when people seen Jesus uh, and knew that Jesus was near they got exhilarated how uh, uh, we read um, about Jesus uh, yeah, being in, in the house over in Mark um, and uh, had, uh, he had come back um, uh, down from the mountain he, he'd come back from uh, meeting the, the madman of Gadara and he was uh, in uh, the house there and uh, the Bible says uh, it was noised about uh, uh, Jesus didn't have to average 
advertise uh, that he was in the area. Hey, man, um, how the people that heard about Jesus, uh, how the people that knew Jesus, uh, how the people who had seen Jesus uh, uh, do the things that Jesus could do. Uh, hey, man, uh, they were exhilarated uh, uh, when they uh, got in his presence. They were exhilarated uh, when they knew that Jesus was near. Uh, and we come to the house of God uh, and we sit there uh, uh, with our faces all uh, stone-faced um, and our lips pooched out sometimes uh, and uh, acting like it's the pastor's job to bless me. My lands, won't you just get excited about what he's done for you in your life? Yeah. Amen. I can't bless you, but Jesus sure can. Amen. Hey man, I can't change your circumstances, but Jesus sure can. Amen. Hey man, I can't do a, a miracle and a wonder that you need in your life, but praise God, I know the one that can. And I just come by tonight to tell you, he's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of getting excited about. He's worthy of shouting the house down about. Man, when they, uh, shepherds, uh, when they left uh, that stable there, uh, when they left that place where Jesus was, uh, man, they were excited and they were telling everybody about Jesus. Everybody about all that they had heard. When was the last time you left out of church and just wanted to tell somebody about Jesus? Hmm. Amen. When, when was the last time you just got alone with Jesus? Amen. And started praising him some and just wanted to start telling everybody about Jesus. Amen. I tell you, we need to get past needing to be hyped up and pumped up because of some holiday. Amen. Man, Christmas is over. What now? Oh, we're just so tired, Pastor. It was just so hard. Why? We make ourselves that way. We're trying to work something up. Amen. And you can't work it up. Amen. Amen. You just need to show up. Amen. Amen. And let him stir you up. Yeah. Amen. And Pretty soon, you won't be able to shut up. Amen. Amen. You'll want to tell everybody. I like that old song. And then I told, well, I knelt down at the altar. I forget it. I can't sing it. <laughs> I, I know the last part of it. That I, but I got up from that altar. I was feeling as light as air. I didn't even have a worried child. I didn't even have a care. I knelt down at the altar. I felt the Holy Spirit came in my heart. And then I knew the very moment. I have something like that. <laughs> I, I'm getting words all messed up. I ain't, I ain't got my, my word feeder here. Hey, Amen. When, when I, I get these kicks. Uh, uh, but he said, and then I told everybody what the Lord had done for me. Yes, I told everybody how it set my spirit free. Well, now I thought to myself I'd keep it quiet. I told it all day and I tell it all night. I want to tell everybody what the Lord has done for me. Why? Because he has exhilarated you. He has stirred you. He has done something in your life uh, uh, that has made such a, a dramatic um, and tremendous change. Um, they got to see Jesus, um, and their lives were never the same again. Uh, the Bible tells us over in Matthew 15, um, in verse number uh, 31, um, how when the, the multitudes um, uh, wondered, um, how when they saw the dumb to speak, the, the maimed um, uh, to be made whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. We see souls saved. Um, how we see the hand of God. God work in people's lives. Uh, how we see God uh, do exceedingly and abundantly uh, above all that we could ask or think uh, in our own lives sometimes. Uh, and yet we don't glorify God for it. Amen. Amen. We need to get past the holidays. We need to get past the hype. Amen. We need to get in touch and in tune with Jesus. Not only was there an expectation an expectation. Not only was there an exhilaration of seeing Jesus, but there was an excitement. What's the difference, preacher? One stirs you emotionally, and the other one stirs you outwardly. Amen. Amen. Stirs you physically. 
Look at in verse number 20. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was. Man, they got exhilarated and they began telling uh, people uh, about what God had done. Uh, but pra praise God, that exhilaration turned into an excitement uh, uh, that kept them uh, going uh, and kept them uh, uh, glorifying God, kept them appraising, uh, 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 kept them uh, worshiping, uh, uh, kept them uh, telling people uh, they wanted everybody to know uh, uh, what had happened uh, in Bethlehem. They wanted everybody to know uh, what had happened um, uh, when God sent his angels to uh, speak to them and, and to talk to them and, and to meet with them. Um, uh, God um, had stirred their hearts. God had stirred their lives. Um, and now there was an excitement um, about seeing Jesus that just didn't grow old. Man, they got exhilarated in the moment. But as they went on, as they went back to their life, there was still an excitement in their life because of what had happened. We get all excited when everything gets hyped up and worked up, and then that goes, and the excitement is gone. The excitement of what God has done for us it's on, on Calvary, our salvation, His salvation, His gift to us. Amen? That ought to be an excitement that never grows old. Amen? Amen? Excitement that, that doesn't lose uh, its, its power the further we get from that date when we got saved. We, we tend to, as human beings, we, we tend to lose the excitement of things. We get bored with things very easily, don't we? Amen. That's why, we, that's why churches think, well, now we, we've got to entertain people. We got to exhilarate them and titillate them and uh, do something that, that just keeps them uh, wanting to come back. Well, friends, if that's what it takes to keep them, that's all it takes to lose them. Yeah, right. Amen. If Jesus isn't enough, amen. If Jesus isn't enough in my church, if Jesus isn't enough in your church, he'll never be enough in another church. Amen. amen? We all know people. And I can name some right off to you right now. And you say, yep, yep, yep. And you see them, and they just go from church to church because this church has got this, and this church has got that, and this church has that. Well, they're, they're wanting to be entertained. They're not looking for Jesus. Yeah. They're looking to satisfy the flesh, to satisfy the tendencies of the natural man. And we got to be careful because we all can get that way with our salvation, the, the further we get away from the day that the Lord saved us, our, our, our date of salvation, the, the time that we got saved, the, the further we move away from that. If we're not careful, it can lose its excitement in our hearts and lives. Yeah. Anybody? At, can, you, can you test anybody? Out? Amen. You understand? Am, am I speaking truth? Amen. And sometimes we need to be reminded. Yeah. Amen. And we need to remind ourselves, and we need to take it upon ourselves to remind ourselves. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. I tell you what, um, every time we hear the Word of God, uh, it ought to stir within our hearts again uh, uh, the excitement um, of when Jesus first saved us. Uh, and we ought to get an excitement uh, so great in our church uh, uh, that it just spills out um, on others um, and spills out uh, into the service, amen, uh, until it touches the lost and it touches those who need to, to be saved every time we hear the word of God it ought to stir us to excitement amen I know sometimes I preach hard messages I, God didn't call me to tickle your ears and God didn't call me uh, to uh, just preach what you want to hear he called me to preach what we need to hear yeah. and let me say when I'm preaching God's word it's preached to me just as well Sometimes I have to agonize over this before I do preach it. Amen. So I'm well aware, amen, uh, of what's coming. And sometimes, no matter how much I've agonized, and somehow I, I've tried to get it in, in the right frame and the frame that I, I hope it'll be accepted in the most, God doesn't let me give it that way. Yeah. Amen. But understand it, but it ought to excite our hearts. 
They were excited because of what they had seen. Anybody here ever seen souls saved? Amen. Amen. Anybody here ever seen God do a, a miracle in their life? Anybody here ever seen a miracle in their family? Something that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt was the hand of God. They were excited because of what they had seen, but also because of what they had heard. Amen. What came first, the hearing or the seeing? They heard about Jesus before they seen him. Amen. We want to see and not hear. But we'll never see God do things. We'll never see what God wants us to get excited about until we learn to hear and to listen. Amen. Amen. Now, me, I'm a visual person. You know, I got I to gotta see things. I got to look at it and ponder over it. But sometimes I can ponder all day long and not see what I need to see because I haven't heard. I haven't listened. Have you ever given anybody instructions to do something? Parents, you, you do it all the time. You tell your kids how to do something, where to do something. Oh, man, I can see, I see some of these kids looking right now and say, yep, <laughs> he's preaching. He's preaching right at me. I'm preaching to all of us. Hey, Amen. But you tell somebody where to find something. Go to this drawer. Go to this cabinet. Go, go here. And, and they go, I can't find it. And you, you go, you get up and you go to where you give them directions to, and they're in the wrong drawer. They're in the wrong cabinet. Why was that? Because they didn't listen. Amen. They thought or they heard what they wanted to hear instead of what they needed to hear. Amen. The shepherds heard what they needed to hear. That they heard the gospel message. And when they heard the gospel message and, and they received the gospel message, and they got to go and see the gospel message in person. Amen. Faith cometh by and hearing by. Amen. How does our faith grow? It's not because of what we see. It's because of what we hear. Amen. What should get us excited? Man, I get excited to see somebody get saved. I get excited to see somebody get happy in the Lord and see the, the Spirit of God just break out in people's hearts and people are shouting. And I get excited about that. But I get excited about here an old preacher like Vance Habner. Preach and tell the truth. And he wasn't all spitting fire, but man, I, I could have listened to him forever. I could have listened to him all night. I was excited about hearing his preaching because he was preaching the word, he was preaching truth. Amen. They were excited by what they had seen, but also by what they had heard. We need to learn to get excited about the Word of God. Amen. Because we're being ministered to, we're being spoken to from another world. This isn't the writing of men. This isn't the thoughts and the desires of man. This is God's Word. It's just as real. It's just as pertinent as it was the day that he spoke it and that he gave it. And the men of old moved under the inspiration of the Spirit of God to pin it down for our behalf. Christmas is over, so what now? Well, let's live expectantly. Every day expecting God to do something. Amen. Every day expecting God to show you something new. Amen. Every day expecting God to teach you something new. You know what? I got news for you. You don't know it all. Amen. And I don't either. 
Y'all can say amen right there. So we, we listen to you. Amen. You, you, go ahead. I know. Amen. We don't know it all. Expecting God to show you and to teach you and to, to lead you and to use you. Amen. Expecting a different outcome every time we come to the service. Why? What do you mean a different outcome? Well, expecting to live, leave differently every time we come and hear the Word of God. It ought to make that much of a change in our hearts. We ought to leave different than what we came in. We ought to leave as changed individuals because God has visited with us one more time. We, we need to live with exhilaration. We, we need to quit uh, moping around and whining, and even in bad situations, even when trouble comes our way, we need to learn to praise God and trust God and just give it all to God. Amen. 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 And just live a life that speaks of how exhilarated we are. Deb said the, the nurses and, and the doctors, she, she just solely trusts God. Amen. And I can't speak about what anybody else does, but when she goes in the hospital, she's having surgery. It's a must that I be there to meet the surgeon that's going to operate on her. And I don't care if he's a Muslim. I don't care if he's a Hindu. I don't care if he's a Christian. I don't care if he's not a Christian. If he's going to operate on her, she makes it right plain clear to him that before he's operating on her, I'm going to be praying for him. And they don't like it sometimes, you can tell. But they ain't operating on her if I don't. She says, look, I, I know I'm all right. I know he's all right, but I don't know about you. Amen. She tells him right straight, right, right plain up. Said, and he's going to pray with you before we have this surgery. Amen. And they, and you know they're so busy and they, they're so important and they want to go on. But they take that five minutes for us to pray. The doctors told her, the doctor come in and says, said, I could tell God walks with you. And God takes care of you. The nurse said, we can tell that God's with you. Why? Because she's exhilarated about what God has done, and she's not afraid to let the world know. And then we need to live with an excitement about us. Excitement about what God's going to do next. What he's already done, what, what we've already seen and heard ought to excite us and ought to Make us go about, go our way, anticipating what he's going to do next. Excited about the next chapter. Excited about the next year. Excited about the next moment. The next opportunity that God gives us to tell somebody about Jesus. Excited about the next time we have to gather. And when, Thursday night, we're going to have a great time. I don't, care, I don't care if there's a handful of us. I don't care if we have a church full. Amen. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. Amen. Why? Because we're going to come expectantly. Amen. We're going to come exhilarated because of what he's already done. Amen. Amen. And excited about what we know he's going to do because of what we've already seen and heard, Amen. what we already know he's already done. Amen. I know this message isn't meant for, it's meant for us. It isn't some, oh, let's go shout the house down, but it's meant for us. Quit letting secular holidays define us and define our faith. Christmas is over. What now? Let's get excited about Jesus. Let's get exhilarated about Jesus. Let's get expecting Jesus to do something. We stand to our feet tonight. Our altar's open if you need to come. You come. If not, we're going to pray and go to the house. And we want God to just have his way, God just to move in our hearts and lives and do what only he can do. Before we dismiss, maybe somebody has a burden on your heart and just slip your hand up and say, Pastor, pray for me. Pastor, remember me in prayer. Pastor, I'm dealing with something. I just need you to pray. Brother Jim, would you 
Pray for us when we go to the house. Thank you.